it's time for the gold conversation and part of what we do in this segment is sit down with key players in the national government just to have a better understanding of what they're doing when it comes to streamlining the agricultural sector and today we do have the pleasure of being joined by the governor of Siaya County Honorable James Orengo thank you so very much for making time to be with us today now just jumping straight into the conversation please give us an overview of the state of agriculture in Siaya County as of now. In Siaya, we've been doing largely subsistence farming. We are, we are trying to change and make agriculture a commercial enterprise. In fact, we are saying uh, the key to transformation and industrialization in Siaya uh, will rely on agriculture. So agriculture is a key pillar. Uh, we we'll rely on agriculture. So agriculture is a key pillar for economic uh, development and transformation. What are the major crops that are an important revenue honor to Siaya County? Uh, well, sub for subsistence is maize, beans, uh, sorghum, uh, and in some areas you find some sugarcane, not so much. Uh, and now you find some cotton, and along the Yellow Delta, there's rice, which is catching, catching up very quickly. Speaking of cotton, now there's a lot of effort to revive the sector of cotton, and that is exactly why we're here in Siaya County. Somebody is watching right now and is wondering, why now? Why cotton right now? What message can you tell them? Siaya and many parts of Janza and Western uh, were a cotton country. Cotton was a major cash crop uh, in Siaya. And if you go to a lot of places along the road, there used to be uh, cotton stores. They, they used to be known as Topamba. And a lot of places were called Topamba. Um, but the problem uh, came about when there was state intervention. So the <clears throat> growing and marketing of cotton and its products uh, became a, a monopoly where the government was the one responsible for all you know, the, uh, the value chains, including the marketing. And uh, government was not paying farmers. So along the line, people just gave up and said it was not worth the while uh, continuing to grow cotton. Uh, but now we, we, are, we are recreating awareness. We are saying cotton growing and uh, the val value chains in, uh, uh, that we can uh, acquire in the process or achieve. Uh, are well paying and I think there's a positive response but we must work harder uh, because there is that um, suspicion that what happened in the beginning may come back to haunt them and haunt them again. So to make sure it doesn't come back again, to make sure we are not at a point where we have the cotton, we have the very hard working cotton farmers but they're not getting paid. What are some of the missions that we are planning to implement to streamline that sector? Well, first of all, even before paying, we are trying to make sure they get the right seeds, they get the right fertilizer, and they get extension services. Uh, but when it comes to you know, marketing, we're relying largely on the corporate societies, again, which is in its infancy in Siaya. Uh, and part of the marketing is uh, done through the private sector. Uh, there are some companies like Thicker Cotton Mills, which is directly uh, going to the farmers, either to buy finished uh, products uh, or you know, paying them, uh, give them seeds at a long time is like doing it on contract. So that, that has worked, uh, but it's small scale. But we want it to be a large scale activity because it, this used to be a cotton county. So we want to make sure that it becomes a cotton county. Uh, and on top of it, probably with a loss of rice and edible oils, I think. If you follow that uh, kind of strategy, uh -huh. we're going to make it. Now, yourself, you're also a cotton farmer. Please tell us what inspired you to get into the space of cotton farming and how has the journey been for you so far? You know, my mom used to grow cotton. The days when it was uh, worth a while, uh, we educated on money realizing from, realized from that type of activity. So last year, I said, uh, let me try it out. 
I'm having my first harvest. When is that? Uh, I started, I started. Uh, and already, you know, I, I am not doing too well. Uh, I'm told I should have uh, harvested about a thousand uh, kilos an acre. I'm doing about four, five hundred, uh, you know, kilos an acre. Uh, I've not sold it yet because I'm not in a hurry. I want to do all the harvesting. But the signs are good, uh, which is what I was trying out. The other difficulty is about, uh, you know, lack of mechanization because I think when farmers have got to till the land the, uh, the old way or using horse-drawn plows, is not as effective. And on the mechanization part, is that something that we're also putting a lot of yes, in right yeah, yes, yes. We acquired some tractors last year. We repaired some that the county had already. Uh, we don't have enough money, actually. We are not necessarily uh, acquiring tractors uh, so that every farmer or every ward or every village uh, can get a tractor to hire from the county. What we're trying to do is to push down uh, the commercial tractors. They come here in this season. If you go through the markets, you see quite a lot of them, which are coming from neighboring counties. Some are coming as far as Eldred uh, and Croatia. Uh, and when they come here, they control, you know, uh, what they charge. Yes, the uh, yeah, yeah, per an acre, per acre. But when we reduce it, then they have to compete. There's a little competition. Uh, plowing an acre, if you leave the market open to them, would be about anything from 4,000, 500 shillings to 5,000. We, we charge 2,500, and that brings, you know, the costs down. So we came here because there was the distribution of quality seedlings to the cotton farmers, which is a very great initiative. But we understand that the seeds has been a very major challenge. After this session, after you've distributed, what are we going to do to make sure that there's consistency? What's the plan? The uh, seed uh, will get from this lot that we have gotten purely for matriculation, uh, so that uh, next year we probably will not need as much seeds as we're getting uh, this season. We'll be able to get seeds which are available to, to us from our own demonstration farms and from other farmers that we would have uh, encouraged uh, to grow cotton for seeds uh, so that in the next season, planting season, uh, seeds can be available locally without having to buy seeds uh, from national uh, outfits or from imp uh, or by importing. You also mentioned, and you were very particular on the fact that the generi right here in Siaya County, you don't want it repaired. You want it to be done brand new for the farmers. And this, of course, will get the farmers very excited. So we are wondering, what timelines are we working with? And why was it very important for you to say that we need to go the direction of getting a brand new one? Well, the, the generi we have is an old machine. It's going to be repaired. And we say that can be used for the time being is like a first aid to the farmers. Yeah. And then the, the other outfits like thicker cotton mills who are buying, uh, and other generies in Elgeo Marquette, in Makweni. Uh, but in the long term, I think uh, from my experience with the rice mill, uh, it is possible to get a, a, a generie, can get us all the value chains down the line. We need a, a modern compact gin, and that I think can serve us better than these old uh, pre Second World War kind of uh, you know machines that we have here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what message are we preaching to our farmers, especially right now in the wake of climate change, mm -hmm. which is affecting mm -hmm. the way we do business in our farms? Mm -hmm. Are we more awake to that mm -hmm. concern right now? We are very much awake to, the, to that now because uh, CIA we are not doing very well. You know our tree cover is less than the national average. So uh, a lot more tree planting, tree growing uh, can, can, can do us good. We are also at force compelled to engage in climate action because uh, we, we got these two rivers, uh, Renzoya and Yala, flowing into uh, a wetland which is getting degraded uh, because of the contamination and pollution upstream. Um, uh, we, we are taking measures, uh, you know, downstream. 
We got three small lakes next to Lake Victoria. Uh, they are very scenic, uh, very unique, uh, and they need protection. Uh, there was a time when one of the dikes, you know, collapsed uh, along Lake Kanyaboli. We lost nearly 60% of the water volumes in that lake. But we have since repaired it, and the volumes are back. But it shows what kind of disasters climate change. Let us talk about the young people. We want the youth to take up more space in the space of agriculture because as we know it, the average age of a Kenyan farmer is 55 years and above. What are we doing? What are, what are incentives, initiatives that we are putting in place to make this space lucrative for the young people? The big problem has been the return from farming. You know, young people want quick money. They want, need quick returns. And in the village here, probably, you know, border border, you know, you're on a motorbike. Uh, sometimes you wait on the line for too long, but eventually the money comes today, quick. Uh, but I've seen with the harvesting we are doing in, uh, in the rice mill, we have a lot of young people coming with those same motorbikes. And they, they, they transport the harvest, the, the rice, the paddies to the stores. Uh, they get money quicker than waiting for people centers. So if we can have the kind of factories that can attract uh, young people uh, in, in the blue economy, uh, fish farming, you know there's a lot of cage farming in the lake. You can take old people into the lake. There's younger, a lot more younger people involved. Uh, and I think uh, the answer is to get what gives good returns. Uh, to the young people. Uh, the old people are more patient. They can wait for a crop for three or six months to get their money. But young people want their money now, uh, which I don't think is a crime. You've mentioned the fish sector, which is a very important sector. Given the fact that we do have Lake Victoria down here, but our farmers are struggling. Actually, some of the richest people in the fish space don't even come from this area. What are we doing for our fishermen? They do so much, yet make so little out of their efforts. What is the plan with the blue economy? We're having a lot of interventions in the, in the, in the fish uh, sector. Uh, We're giving out fish feeds. Uh, giving out cages uh, and uh, using the beach management, management units. Uh, they can put their resources together. We put some landing sites for them, uh, again in collaboration with the national government. So I, I think we have a lot of activity which can uh, make sure that uh, we benefit from the blue economy, at the same time uh, protecting that environment. But as you say, get a lot more young people engaged into practical work that can give returns. Yeah, I am telling the young people say yeah, farming is good for us. Uh, food security, we must have it because a hungry nation is an angry nation and CIA yeah, can do a lot of a lot better. Uh, eighty five percent of our land is arable. We got the most pristine part of the lake. So join me in making Siaya a food secure. Now, Honorable James Orengo, we've heard of the good plans you have for the people in Siaya County when it comes to agriculture. And we want to hold you accountable. So we want you to give us an invite. When should we come back so that we can see how far gone you are with this fantastic promises? When do we can, can, can you come back in April next year? April next year. That's a year. A year from now. And I'll come and see those nice reforms. No, no, no. We will do, uh, take some figures with you. Great. And when you come back, we'll look at those figures again. The audience have had it. Thank so you. We're going to hold you accountable in a year. Okay. Thank you. And I stand to be a count. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasant talking to you. Absolutely.
And that is all that we did have for you in our gold conversation. We came all the way to Siaya County to have a conversation with the governor of this amazing county, Honorable James Orengo. And we've gotten an opportunity to hear of the great plans that he does have for the people in Siaya County. Again, young people, this is your chance to take up space in the agricultural sector because, yes, it is getting streamlined. We will be back again next year, like he said, to see how far gone we are with the promise. And trust you me, Kenya's Gold will be here. We don't play. We don't play. Thank you so very much for watching. But do stay with us because we do have a lot more on all matters agriculture. Thank you.